So now let's switch gears a little bit and talk about you know, what makes us really excited as researchers. And that is, of course, dynamic global illumination, solving the real lighting problem. So I'll talk about a couple of different solutions, but at a high level, they more or less boil down to the same you know, fundamental steps. But before we go to that, I'll show um, just a little illustrative example here with a video. Um, in this case, there's a single light source outside the room, so the majority of the scene is lit indirectly through light bounced off the floor and bounced off the furniture. And this was rendered using path tracing using 1,000 samples per pixel. You can see that it's still noisy, so that illustrates the complexity of doing the full lighting simulation. The first observation we can see in this video is that the lighting changes at very different rates. At some parts where the jump is moving or the light is starting moving, it's changing very quickly. But then other parts of the scene, the lighting is almost static. So for example, behind the sofas, some corners of the room, there's almost no change. So of course we want to exploit that and avoid you know, recomputing things at places where it's not needed. So, you know, how would, how would you do that? How would you go from a thousand samples per pixel down to realistic budget of maybe one stochastic path per pixel, one or a few? Um, so I'll go through a number of different steps in an algorithm to, to sketch out how I can do that. The first is, let's use temporal accumulation. That's a favorite trick, it solves all problems. Um, a neat thing about ray tracing is that while you shoot your rays, you can almost for free compute extra ray heuristics. For example, your, the distance at the hit point from where you shot the ray from, that, that directly gives you the distance to, to how far away an, a, a, an occluder is. Uh, similarly, you can, have, you can evaluate motion vectors in object space at any hit, and you can evaluate such heuristics at any point in the, in the light transport simulation. And the idea is then to boil down you know, ray heuristics collected through ray tracing into something that can control the rate of temporal accumulation. So that you accumulate and let it decay slower in areas where it changes slower, and then refine the solution faster in areas where, it change, where the light changes faster. So in this video, um, we've just done a small test for this. Um, so I'll play the video. It starts all blue. It's color-coded. Blue means that there's no reuse from previous samples. And then you can see that as, as time goes on, some areas you know, converge quite quickly into regions where it's with red, which means that there's a lot of temporal reuse, while other areas are not, not changing. As, you know, other areas need to be updated faster, so they're, they're blue or green in this case. So this gives us, you know, this gives us a little bit, it gets us some, some you know, a little bit towards the solution, but it is, of course, doesn't really solve the problem. And I think you're all wondering, you know, what to do about ghosting and all these other problems with temporal accumulation, because you can't really accumulate over hundreds or thousands of frames using temporal accumulation in screen space. And those problems are mainly, you know, the mainly an effect of that working in screen space. You have to reproject using motion vectors. You have problems at the screen boundaries. You promise with disocclusions when an object moves, the pixels that become unoccluded that weren't previously seen. So let's not do that at all. Let's not accumulate in screen space. Let's accumulate in a different space that doesn't have these you know, bad problems. And one of those choices is accumulating in light map space. So an outline of an algorithm that would be use light map space as a cache for illumination. Don't see it as a static you know, lighting solution, use as a cache. And then use ray heuristics collected during ray tracing to guide the fall off and refinement of that cache. So you, you only refine it where it's actually needed. And then the important other component is that if you're caching things in, in a data structure like a light map, you can actually use that cached illumination as input to the lighting solutions for the next frame. So that means that you can refine the lighting by letting the lit text from one frame be input to the next frame. And over time, refine the lighting so that bounce, light bounce is one, you know, one bounce per frame. And that gives you a huge improvement in, in, in noise levels. 
Of course, the drawback is that there's going to be slight temporal lag in the, in the indirect illumination, especially in higher bounces. So if you have a case where you know, light shines into a room and it bounces many, many times to, to hit the dark corner somewhere, the light to that corner is going to be delayed compared to you know, when the light actually came in. But fortunately, that's quite a forgiving. It's one of the nicer kinds of artifacts. It's, it's, uh, it's much better than a ghosting or you know, an immediate visible artifact. <clears throat> then, of course, you can't get away without the denoising filter. Denoising is really key in all kinds of, all kinds of ray tracing algorithms, realistically speaking. Um, in this case, you can apply a filter in, in light map space. You can do it in screen space or a combination of the two. And I, I don't think we have the final answer on exactly how and where to filter, but you know, it's, it's a combination of those spaces. I'll show some examples. So on the, on the right here, um, you see an, you know, the conceptual pipeline, pipeline implementing this kind of algorithm. It always starts with the G-buffer pass that lays down your, your inputs to your ray generation shader. Um, compute pass defines you know, where, where to update your lighting, then shoot rays and refine the lighting in those areas, apply a denoising filter, and, and consume the data, and do the same for the next frame. So thinking about this for a while, there's nothing really unique in using light map space. You can imagine a very similar algorithm um, operating in, in another data structure. Light maps is just a data structure keeping the illumination. So potential choices could be you know, light probes distributed in volume. You can also think of uh, potentially using voxel structure or a world space hash, similar to what stochastic progressive photo mapping is doing. The important thing is you need some place to cache your illumination so that you can refine it over time and denoise it. As long as you have data structure to cache it in, you can apply a similar kind of algorithm. So I'll show some examples of uh, different prototypes where we tried this. Um, these are early results from a you know, rendering pipeline based on these concepts in light map space, which was developed by our content, content, tech, con, content tech team at the NVIDIA. So here is the noisy one, the raw one sample per pixel in dark illumination. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot of data to work with. There's a few random pixels here and there that have you know, a gray value instead of a black. But that's basically the input. And on the bottom right, you see the reference image, what it should look like when the full indirect illumination solution is, is computed. So I'll play the video now. We can see it starts black because there's no reuse. And then over the first few frames, it's going to converge to, to the actual solution. And then there's some dynamic objects in the video. We can see that lighting is indeed updated. And, and if you look hard, there's, you can see a slight lag in the, in the updates, but it's, it's fairly forgiving, I think. So look at it. So in this scene, the light is only coming in through the windows you see in the back that are black in this case. So obviously the quality is not it's not you know 100% perfect. There's some blotches and so on, but it's you have to compare it against the the image we saw before with the one sample per pixel, which is the, which is really the actual input to this. And this is running in real time on a on a single GPU. All right. So another solution um, that was showing light map space. Um, here's another example using a world space hash instead. So what a stochastic progressive photo map would, do, would be doing. Um, conceptually, it's, it's very similar. It's caching illumination in that other data structure, refining it over time using the previous solution as input to the next frame, 
and then you're denoising it. So here's the input again, one sample per pixel, and then denoise the output. So I think this looks, you know, it looks promising. This, these, these conceptual steps, I think, are going to be, they're going to be part of a future solution for, you know, a product-ready um, dynamic global automation solution. Of course, the number of tweaks left to do, um, and we also need, we need to evaluate, you know, where, where is the actual performance? How, ma how many, how many rays can you get away with to, to do this in, in the full, fully complex, complex scene that games, the games have? Um, as a sidetrack, we still, you know, we still investigate and can we, can we actually do without the data structure that globally tracks the illumination? So I'll show some examples of, you know, how far we've got in, you know, traditional screen space filters. So here's input again, path trace, you, you get, the, get the idea, one sample pixel, and then an advanced screen space denoising filter. This filter is based on temporal computation, starting that, then using a cross bilateral filter in screen space that uses noise free guide images that are output by the G buffer pass to guide the bilateral filter. And then it has a noise estimation step that really helps you pick parameters for the bilateral filter. And then this whole process is, is, is iterated two times, two different spa spatial scales. And that allows you to remove you know, the noise both at the fine scale and broader to avoid blotches in the image. <clears throat> 